Hey, good evening, everyone. I hope that y'all are excited to be here tonight. Sister Desiree is going to be joining me. She is a Felician sister, and I found her on Instagram. Someone sent me a message and said, Catherine, you should talk to her, and absolutely. So I'm so glad that we were able to make it work. She is so lovely. Okay, here she is. She's on the ball. There she is. Hello. Hi, how are you, Sister Desiree? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you? Thanks oh, for inviting it's me. Running and I have my it's raining and my kids are outside running in the rain. So oh. it's a good day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> it is. So if you hear squeals of laughter, it's because they're outside running. So Oh good. <laughs> I'm so glad that we were able to make this connection, especially tonight. It's a really beautiful night. So I'm glad that you're here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm in New Mexico with my family, actually. I live oh. in Pennsylvania right now, so I'm enjoying the sun. <laughs> oh, yes. We are getting ready yeah. to drive through New Mexico on Wednesday, so oh. on our oh. way, big road trip. But yes, um, I listened to so many of your interviews and was watching, and I only have about a thousand questions for you tonight, <laughs> so hopefully we can get through those in the next 30 minutes or so. Yeah, I'm sure. You're like, I'm game. I'm game. Yeah. Well, why don't, why don't we start with, why don't you tell us a little bit about what your faith life was like whenever you were growing up? You had some really, um, I loved hearing about uh, your mom and some of the things that you guys did growing up. So I'd love for you to share some of that with us. Sure. Um, well, uh, I grew up in New Mexico. And so a lot of what we did was very typical Hispanic family, you know, praying the rosary together at night and going to church on Sundays and during the week, but typically for like feast days and holy days, you know, um, novenas, all that good stuff. That good Catholic <laughs> <You know>? stuff. <laughs> right, right. Burying St. Joseph in the yard, you know, when you need stuff. So, yes. yeah, it was, um, but uh, yeah, it, it was very comfortable then for me to continue exploring that when I grew up. You know, I went to catechism class every Wednesday at church and, you know, would come home with stories about saints and was always excited to hear about another nun that was a saint, you know, like St. Teresa. And so yeah. there's a few, there's just a couple of nuns who have made oh, yeah. it to sainthood, yeah, just a couple. <laughs> so how did you get, I know a, a big, beautiful part of your story is mm -hmm. through dance. So how was it? I know you didn't start off dancing for the halftime show with the semi-pro right. basketball team. So tell me how it started and then, and then how it led to that. Sure. Um, I, ever since I was a kid, I was in dance. I was in ballet for about seven years. And uh, just a funny story is we, my dad was in the Air Force, and so we lived in Germany for a little while. And so I was in ballet in Germany, uh, but I don't, I have no idea what happened. I know we were just running around on our toes in a little circle, and I just started crying. <laughs> and so after that, I didn't want to be in ballet anymore. And then I went back in it when we moved back to the States. So then I did it for seven years. Um, but then when I joined my high school dance team, it was more like hip hop or jazz. And I had the technique because of ballet, but they were like, Desiree, we need you to like hit something, you know, be real fierce. And I was like, Mah. so it took me a while to transition to hip hop and jazz, but I got there. Um, yeah, that's a big, it's a big leap from, I mean, technically, yes, ballet, but the technique as far as what it looks like from ballet to hip hop is yeah. a little different. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, so the energy is very different. Yes. Um, yeah, but uh, so then after I graduated high school I coached the junior varsity dance team at my high school and then also joined the semi-professional basketball team or d-league basketball team oh my yeah. gosh I know so my <laughs> son is a sport management major so he's been coaching me on oh. all the different leagues so yes I know <laughs> yeah. all about the d-league I know all about yeah. that so oh do you which do you love more do you miss ballet or do you miss hip like which one is your favorite to do my favorite is uh, kind of like a contemporary ballet um so i i just like to move and freestyle that's my yeah. my favorite is just letting the music uh, take over and letting the holy spirit guide whatever i do that's my favorite but yeah if i so were to go out and a dance class to be ballet <laughs> one would think that you might have to give up dance to go mm -hmm. into the convent but i know that there's a beautiful intersection between your dancing and the convent so tell us about how that initial uh, meeting happened and then how you eventually became a sister. Yeah, yeah. So I also thought that I would have to give up dance. But when I 
first met the sisters, uh, it was on a pilgrimage. I met these two amazing Felician sisters. I'd never heard of them before in my life. Who were the Felicians? I don't know. But <laughs> then um, when they got to know me a little bit and they knew I was a dancer, although I don't think they pictured me dancing on a you know, basketball court in like tiny clothes, but oh. they were like, dance, okay. But... <laughs> so <laughs> um, they said, we're going to be celebrating a jubilee, which is, you know, some sisters who have been in the convent for like 60, 70 years were celebrating their commitment. And we would love for you to come and do some, some sort of dance for that. And I was like, okay, I, I've never really heard about dance in that kind of context. And so as they explained it to me, they said, really just do something graceful. You know, we'll, we'll give you the music and you can just kind of choreograph or, you know, just move with it. And I thought, well, with my background in belly, I could, I could do something graceful, you know. And um, Was that intimidating, though? Like when the convent asked you to come dance, were you intimidated by that? For some reason, I was. I think because it was a no. smaller crowd than a basketball game, I was like, <laughs> ah, I got this. <laughs> yeah. You didn't have to throw T-shirts or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so then, but when I, so when I did the dance, it was a very sharp contrast between dancing at a basketball game and dancing in a convent. And I didn't, I wasn't even thinking about that contrast or the difference it was going to be. I just thought, okay, graceful. But this was the first time that people were praying with me because I was dancing. And I was like, dance could be more than entertainment. <laughs> I did I just never knew that. I never knew it could be a prayer that I could use my body for prayer. And I was like, I like this. You know, I, I think this is how I want to live my life. And I've been living it for entertainment, which, you know, enjoying the gifts and talents that I had was nothing wrong with that, but it was so empty. And I was like, I want this. I want to live my whole life with this kind of meaning and purpose. And if that means I give up dance, okay. But why would why would God ask that of me? He'd given it to me, and that was how He drew me here. So then I ended up teaching dance. I ended up going to Haiti and dance, you know, teaching dance to young women down there. All kinds of amazing transformative experiences for myself and a lot of young women. And I just thought, I that's what I would have wanted, but I couldn't have said that to God, you know. But God knew that. I love that. I mean, and this is a consistent theme that I'm seeing both with sisters and with priests that. The thing that they thought that they were going to give up, which they had come, you know, <laughs> they had found their peace with yeah. to join the convent or inner seminary. And then as it turns out, God uses that little piece of their story to become an even bigger part of their story on the other side. Yeah. I, I mean, he's a good and faithful God. I Amen. love, I love that. <laughs> you know, it wasn't until actually I hadn't thought of dance being a prayer, mostly because I stink at dancing. I can do two stepping, <laughs> very different than ballet and hip hop, <laughs> but you posted a video the other day of you dancing and it was so moving to me. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, I mean, you posted it and it was just, I mean, for me, it had double meaning, obviously all the things that are going on in the world. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But then your reaction to that and the prayer that you did that. I mean, I sat, I've watched it. I won't, it's an embarrassing amount of times. I won't tell you how many times <laughs> I've watched it, but it's very beautiful for me to watch you, but, to watch you as a sister pray that way and invite us into that space is a gift. So th I just wanted to affirm you and say, thank you for inviting us into that. Um, so tell me about Haiti. I want to know about these do, were boys and girls that you were teaching or just girls. No. So it was only girls because the boys in Haiti have soccer. Like they, it's, okay. you know, when we talk about gender equality in the United States, like it's, it's a conversation we can have in Haiti. It's not really a conversation. So boys have opportunities. Girls didn't really have much. So the sisters who live there said, we want you to do something for the young women here. And I was like, oh, I could teach them dance. And they said, perfect, come. <laughs> and um, so I stayed for a month. And the first week I taught them just some basic ballet technique, you know, plies and first position, all that. And, um, and I love, so I, I actually got a lot of people to donate some clothes because when I taught dance in the high school, the girls had to come in leotards and tights and they hated it. But after a while, they realized it made them take the class more seriously because it was a dance class. You know, they thought, well, I'll just take dance and it'll be super easy. And I was like, no, we're going to dance. We're going to actually be dancers. You may <laughs> so, think because I'm a sister because it's going to yeah. be easy, but you better get your yeah. leotards on. You were serious. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, so oh. I thought... Yeah, tights were going to be too hot for Haiti. So I did get, though, yeah. some like tank tops and some sports bras and some um, spandex shorts. 
and some ballet shoes and they wore that every single day and you could see oh. just how proud they were to have like a uniform to come to dance in and um, there were about 20 of them and from ages about 12 to 20 and so the first week was ballet and then the second week I taught them um, a, I teach I taught them a dance that I choreographed and it was to hello by Adele and so by the end they're all singing it they don't know what they're saying but they're like ah and hello um that's and, so funny yeah it was so fun it just was it was fun and then the third week a young woman there a Haitian she um her family was well off enough that they were able to have her attend dance lessons for the Haitian culture and so she taught a Haitian dance the third week so then the fourth week we practiced everything and at the end we had a little recital and it was amazing so people um, came out of nowhere because they heard there was some sort of party and there uh, was like where are all these people coming from <laughs> and so i had to make a, a whole bunch of cupcakes so that people would have something to like snack on because <laughs> it was a party you didn't know that you were hosting a party <laughs> exactly. oh my gosh but yeah, how awesome so, that those girls introduction to dance mm -hmm. was with a sister That's oh so and so it made amazing. me cry i just watching them i was in tears because i oh. could see this sense of dignity that I had not seen in them when I first came. And it was like, they had something to show. They had something to offer of themselves. And it was like, they, all these people came for them. It was, they were like hyped at the end. They were throwing their own party at, at the end. It was, it was oh. incredible. You must really cherish that memory. Oh my oh, yeah. goodness. Yeah. Oh. Well, maybe I'll post a video of their dancing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Someone was asking earlier. So sister Desiree has it on her Instagram account. And then it's also on YouTube, I think the dance. So mm -hmm. Just oh, yeah. Google yeah. Sister Desiree dancing. You'll find it. But I'll, um, <laughs> I'll link it after we finish. I'll link it here. Um, so you have a really, um, you know, so some of the sisters that I've interviewed have worn habits and then some mm -hmm. don't wear habits. And everybody has different reasons as to why their order yeah. does or does not wear habits. But you started out wearing a habit and now right. um, and the veil and now you don't. So tell us why that is, why you started wearing it and why you don't wear it anymore. Yeah, so our community is a, a little bit unique in that we wear both. So we have sisters who wear a full, more traditional habit with a veil, and then sisters who wear something more like what I'm wearing, you know, beige or brown. Um, and so when I first met the Felician sisters, I didn't even notice what they were wearing. I just noticed their joy and their depth of relationship. And so when I chose to enter, um, after the first couple years of formation, when I became a novice, that's when they said, okay, are you going to wear a, a habit or something a little modified? And I hadn't even thought about it. And I thought, well, sisters should wear habits. So that's what I'm going to wear. And they were like, okay. So, you know, I had the traditional veil with the habit and the scapular and the collar. And um, so I wore that throughout my time in novitiate, which is a time of like learning uh, more about the community, my, my, about myself. And then after that, I made first vows. And so I was pretty much fully a sister, but still kind of like the engagement period where you're, there's oh, still some growth to be had. Yeah. But you're, that's the commitment you want to make. And um, so I made my first vows and I moved to California and I was teaching at an all girls high school. And um, I was there for four years, but I wore the habit for like two and a half. And what started getting me thinking about changing what I wore was just like, I didn't really feel authentic in it anymore. I started feeling like I, I had, I'd become a symbol, you know, people are like, oh, sister. And in a lot of people's minds, not everybody's, but a sister is like not human. You know, it's like, we don't ever get upset. We are not ever impatient. We don't ever have bad You get days. upset? Really? Yeah. What? You're breaking all the myths. Okay. I know. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. Spoiler alert. So, yeah. Just let you know. Um, <laughs> so um, I, then I realized though that I was like, living into that symbol. And for me, I, I never was vulnerable with my own self or even with other people. And teaching at this all girls school where people like the girls were all just freely themselves. They were singing in the halls. They were just like yelling all the time. They're crazy. I loved them. Um, but to see them be authentically themselves and like invite me to do the same. I, I was feeling like I had let go of my humanity and I, I still wanted to be human. You know, I, I wanted to be a sister as myself. And um, I realized that to me it felt, so not only was it a wall that was blocking that vulnerability, but also like my whole identity as a female was just like, everything was covered and it's just like my face, you know? 
and and as a woman of color and i mm. even so now like all the black lives matter is like it's everywhere but at that point it had like just sort of started and i was paying attention to it and i thought you know a lot of people get upset because they feel like the catholic church is silent about some of these things and and i didn't want to be silent and so that was my way of saying like i'm going to own my identity as a female and as a woman of color and and part of that is my hair you know it's it's big it's curly and i want to be myself with people and um and not that sisters who wear habits are not being authentic we sure. i feel like the diversity that people of color are asking for that's necessary everywhere you know even yeah. in the church like there are all sorts of different religious communities franciscan dominican because diversity is so enriching and so amen. same with what we amen. wear yeah <laughs> amen say it a so little louder for the and, people in the back yeah, yeah. <laughs> so sisters and habits are important and sisters not in habits are important and we i had a student say to me so some people didn't even notice they were like did you cut your hair <laughs> like they didn't know that i just stopped wearing a veil you know but um one of them said you know i like that you're wearing normal clothes because i feel like i can relate to you better and uh, you know it, not that everyone has to be in normal clothes but again Sure. each of us speaks to a different audience and that's like the teacher next door to me was this crazy loud drama teacher was very quiet you know religion teacher and both of us had different groups of students who came to us for different things so um that was where i i kind of came from and i feel much more like myself as a sister and i felt like that's what i saw in the felician sisters when i met those two in the beginning they were both very different and to see that diversity in their personalities told me this you can be yourself in this community and i didn't realize what that meant all those implications but as i got to know my own self on the journey i was like oh i'm becoming more myself in this community so it was like yeah and you and you don't have to give up i mean i think sometimes a mm -hmm. myth of those of us that are not sisters that think that you give up your identity to be a bride right. of christ right. but as i've talked to all of y'all and you articulated yeah. so beautifully is that you become more of who god is asking you to be and this is who he's asking you to be. I mean, Ooh, I think so. of <laughs> I think of all those I'll think of all those young girls, certainly the ones that you teach, but maybe the ones that are watching this or maybe the moms of the daughters um who have um young girls of color who look at you and think maybe I can be a sister too. You know, I mm. see I see myself and her. I didn't know they made I'm I was talking to a sister earlier today and I said I didn't even know that they made sisters anymore cuz I didn't I'm a convert. So I didn't know that they made them. I was like, wow. And I met them in my late twenties and I was so amazed. I was like, wow. And they're young. Like, I didn't know that. Yeah. And I think that same revelation must be happening for young mm -hmm. women of color to look at women like you and think, I didn't know they made them anymore. Yeah. And I, not only that, but I didn't know that they made them with such joy and such mm -hmm. purpose. So, I mean, if there's a girl watching this sister Desiree who thinks, maybe I want to be a sister and she's a young um, black girl or a young Latina or, or whatever her coloring may be. What, and what would you say to her? What would you say to her to encourage her to say, we have a place, there's a place for you in the sisterhood. What would you tell her? Um, I would say, well, first of all, touching on your acknowledgement of representation and why that matters is like, people aren't going to see themselves if they don't see themselves in you. So if you want people to see us represented, sometimes that has to be you representing, you know? Um, but like, I guess some suggestions that I could think of is, is look for communities, even at, like the community I joined is mostly white women, <laughs> but I saw that diversity of spirit and I knew it was, it was there enough that I could be here too. And so to look for communities that have, where you can feel that, you know, where you find that in their relationships, that they can be themselves, whether they're all white or not, but that, they say, oh, we're ourselves. You can come here and be yourself, you know. Um, and, and two, communities that give you opportunity to branch outside of community. You know, we all have our immediate families, which are very important, but we also have friends, you know. Yeah. So, yes. yeah, my community is my immediate family of choice, but now I can branch out too. So I belong to different groups, like a group called Giving Voice for Sisters Under 50. And we can just be our young, happy selves, you know, and go on camping trips and then have like learning workshops together. And we're coming up with a diversity workshop for ourselves in the fall. So, you so know, is this with like your that, order or is this with other orders? Yeah, this is all sorts of um, different this congregations. This is awesome. Oh yeah, my gosh, this is I great. Love it. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Ah, this is awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that so, existed. Yeah. And it's because 
we are not the majority, the majority. So we need a place sometimes to be us with our peers, you know, like I can be me in community, but I also need some peers. And I have some peers in community, but this is like, you know, outside. So all across the country, um, or like the National Black Sisters Conference. So women of color that are in religious life, and they're my peers in that way. So to be able to find communities that allow you to branch out, not just for systems of support, but just for peers, you know, and having having those groups as well. Well, and I mean, I think the the parallels I keep finding between sisterhood and motherhood are very similar in the ways like mm -hmm. I look for peers that are maybe a little bit older than me or a little bit younger so that we mm -hmm. can support each other. Um, yeah. There's not too many moms that have kids kindergarten to college. So when I meet one, I was like, can we be friends? <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you look for commonalities to support yeah. you in your vocation. Mm -hmm. I think how did I not know these things existed? I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit said, Catherine, you should interview sisters because y'all are absolutely fascinating. So what's your favorite, like, as you look at your day, what's your favorite mm -hmm. part of being a sister? Uh, people, actually. <laughs> it's people. And I, I love, like, it's hard because so much is online right now. And I, yeah. as the vocation director, I would travel a lot. And I was with different groups all the time, all over the place. And so now I'm like, meh. <laughs> but... Yeah. Um, I just love that I get to journey with so many people. And like you're saying, you know, there's a motherhood that comes with like sharing your life with somebody and um, helping bring up life in others. And it just, there's like, yeah, so much life happening when I'm with people. <laughs> well, and I mean, yeah. it's a vocation structure that must be really hard because um, several of the sisters that I've talked to are vocation structures and they're like, and I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> kind of hanging out here you know yeah until I'm like we let's can... do a zoom group <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean you just can't make the same yeah. connection the same heart yeah. connection is not there so I know yeah. you must be anxious to get back um to doing what it is that you do so um I mean what was it about the Felicians that you I mean because that's a that's actually to be honest that's a sister or an, an order of sisters that I had never heard of before but yet when I posted that you were going to be here I got so many messages from either people that said oh I interacted with the Felicians or oh. I discerned um yeah. I discerned my vocation with the Felicians so I was like what how did I not know they existed <laughs> so I mean what was it specifically I mean that like when you looked at them that you were like, yes, like that specific order. Cause I know there are so many beautiful orders of sisters, but what was it specifically about the Felicians that drew you in? Um, it was just that, that diversity of spirit that I saw that you could be yourself um, and the joy. I just like, anytime I went with them, it was just happy. And I felt yeah. at home whenever I visited. Um, and the more I journeyed with the community, the more I saw myself in them. You know, like I like the Franciscan spirituality. So we follow the rule of Saint, third order rule of St. Francis, um, you know, and I was like, oh, that's my confirmation saint, you know, it's just like, oh, St. Francis's? Yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. So it was just like all these little connections. And even though I admired lots of other communities, the more I got to know, I just thought, no, this is like God placed this community on my path at just the time that I was ready to really think about my future and really be open to that possibility. So I thought, I don't really need to question it. <laughs> you know, I'll just go with that. And doors opened and it just was like, you know, easy, easy walking. <laughs> so when you, when you joined the sisterhood and when you joined the convent, did you get, were there any of the friends that you developed in the dance world, were they surprised? Or were they like, oh yeah, we saw that. She, we probably knew she was gonna do that. Or were there some people that were like, you're doing what? I'm yeah. curious to know what the reaction was among your peers, speaking of yeah. those. Um, actually, most people were like, oh, that makes sense, you know, oh. and um, friends that I had, even in high school, when I was on the dance team, were like, yeah, you never really seemed like the dancers, even though you dance, you, like you were just always, you're like different, you know, <laughs> like in a good way, but yeah, 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 a lot. But one of them was like, do those still exist? <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she was also... probably me. <laughs> yeah. She was probably was like, talking yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just, um, I think what, I, what I've been enamored with, I think with the Felician sisters is so much of the beautiful feedback that I got from people when I mm -hmm. shared that you were going to be here. But, um, but I love how you, um, how you didn't give up your identity, that you still, you found a way to, I think, balance the, um, the beauty and the richness, richness of your culture and the beauty and the joy of Jesus. Because all y'all, I swear, every sister that I meet, y'all all like have this glow, like you don't <laughs> age. You like, 
you like have this halo. I know that you say that y'all get mad, but I don't believe you because maybe you're just nice around me. I don't know. But every time I see a sister, I'm like, I, I thought about one time I was telling a sister, I said, I'm thinking about giving a cutout, like a life size cutout. You know how they have the Pope ones and like you can stand oh, yeah. next to the Pope. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about getting cutouts of y'all that I can just put around my house and then tell my kids, <laughs> go talk to the sister because she's basically telling you to behave yourself. Yeah. So, cause I don't believe that you guys have bad days. Um, but yeah, I think, um, so do you have, is there a, I know it, life has been hard the last few months, I think for everybody, but certainly in the last month or so, is there, mm -hmm. um, is there a prayer or is there, I know dance has certainly been one prayer for you, but is there another prayer that you can, share with us that's been sort of healing or helpful mm -hmm. for you as we sort of navigate this, I hope, awakening in the church of the yeah. beauty of diversity. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a good thing I have my phone right here and hopefully I can find it, but it was a prayer I just stumbled upon because somebody sent me a text and they're like, do you have like a prayer for Mary? Um, something, you know, I, my mom's struggling and I really want to pray to marry but I can't let me see if I can find it because it's That's so okay. good and I just okay. googled it like prayers to Mary you know and it came up and it was like uh oh here it is it's called and I've never heard it but it's called prayer to our lady in time of trouble okay <laughs> it's perfect so you're writing that down no I would love to I'm writing it down as you yeah. pray it so yes yeah okay so I'll pray it slowly yes that'd be I, no I, I'm not gonna write the prayer down I'm gonna write oh, prayer to our <laughs> You're like, wow, Catherine, this is going to take yeah. a while. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> prayer, to, prayer to Our Lady. In time of trouble. Of, in time of trouble. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Would you mind praying it? I would love to hear it. Yes. Holy Virgin Mary, you are reigning in glory with Jesus, your son. Remember us in our sadness. Look kindly on all who are suffering or fighting against any difficulty. Have pity on those who are separated from someone they love. Have pity on the loneliness of our hearts. Have pity on the weakness of our faith and love. Have pity on those who are weeping, on those who are praying, on those who are fearful. Holy Mother, please obtain for all of us hope and peace with justice. Amen. Amen. Oh, that was good at the end. It's like highlight that and bold yeah. it. Oh, that's I was like, good. where did that come from? It was yeah, Ooh. I love it. It's my new favorite. Yeah, I mean you know, a few, some, so some people on this space may know this, but uh, maybe it was two weeks ago. I'm forgetting. Um, it's been one long, like, <laughs> like, is it really June? Um, but a few weeks ago, some of, um, beautiful women of color took over, um, some other women's, um, mm -hmm. kind of platforms or whatever, and just shared from their heart, like who they are and what they're struggling with and what they see for the church. And it was so, um, it was really affirming and beautiful to see the different personalities and the different interests and the different advocacy that each one of y'all brought to the table. But I was particularly um, excited about you because I was like, hey, I knew about her first. <laughs> but I loved, I just loved your, um, you have a really beautiful, gentle spirit. I know we haven't met in person. Um, but that's, I mean, that's what I see. And I think that's what a lot of, a lot of people see. And um, it's very beautiful. I mean, it's, uh, it's inviting. And I think it encourages people to think maybe I should, maybe I should widen the lens a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should open my heart a little bit more and maybe I should be more welcoming to people that I haven't been welcoming to before. And so thank you for sharing yourself in that space. And then, you know, on your own page too, but um, it's a really beautiful <laughs> gift that you have sister Desiree. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I just wanted you to know that because um I think it's important to to let people um, into spaces that you previously didn't let them into before. Mm -hmm. So thank you for mm -hmm. allowing us there. I appreciate that. Um, I always ask at the end if there's a specific way that either the people that are watching it right now or the people that end up watching this video later, if there's a specific way that we can pray for you. So please oh. tell us how we can pray for you. That's a great question. I love that. Um, That, well, just thinking about John the Baptist, because his feast was uh, last week, that uh, everything I do, because I'm a little busybody, I like to always be doing stuff, <laughs> uh, but that everything that I do would point to Jesus, that it would not be even 
point to my community or any, but to, to Jesus. Yeah. That's a good one for all of us. That's really good. <laughs> Y'all always surprise me. I never know what you're going to say. So it's, um, <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, do you mind? I know, I know you just prayed a prayer for us, but I'm going to ask you to pray another one because you're pretty good at it. So do you mind, <laughs> do you mind ending us with a prayer? Sure. Let's see. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. Thank you for the learning and the loving that took place here. May we allow it to enter our hearts so fully that it, it continues throughout all our days, throughout all our interactions, in our thoughts, in our conversations, so that all we are will continue to point to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, I love that. Thank you for the learning and the loving that we did here. That was really, really beautiful. Oh, Ooh, I'm glad I met you. So I'm going to have to, so when flats open back up and we're driving, but whenever we're able to get to where you are, I'm going to, don't be surprised if I come knock on your door one day hey, and you'll be like, we got I know. Space. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking time out of, um, I know what is um, a busy day of praying and um, being in community with your sister. So tell them, thank you for letting me steal you for just a little bit. I'm grateful for that. <laughs> and um, thank you for your ministry. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this and of enjoyed course. you and your spirit. You have a very gracious spirit. So thank oh, you. you're sweet. That means a lot coming from you. So thank <laughs> you. All right. Thank you, Sister Desiree. Have a beautiful weekend. Yeah, thanks okay. to all who joined. Yes. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.